power. E to the zero, anything to the zero power is one. Can you solve it? Yes. Yeah, what are you going to do? Hey, you're done. You're done. One more thing I want to show you with this problem. What if this is not a zero? What if this is like a, a two? If that's a two, would you still do the same thing here? Mm -hmm. a, and then you'd have a two here. What would, what would this become? You'd have a square there, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could you still divide by five? Because mm -hmm. right now you, you have e squared, you're going to leave the e squared. That, that, that's the, the e is a number, this is appropriate, it's fine. Leave the e squared, just divide by five. We get e squared over five equals x, and that's your answer. Are you okay with that one? Yeah, exactly the same, only now you don't have a one, you have e squared. We've actually seen <laughs> stuff like that before in this class when we were dealing with logarithms the very first time. Okay, would you raise your hand feel okay with solving exponentials and solving logarithms? Awesome. You want to see an application? Uh, oh, come on, it's the last, last one. <laughs> an application is something you have on your iPhone. Uh, hey, games. I have calculators. Oh, God. <laughs> I have four graphing calculators on my iPhone. Oh my God. They're all cool. <laughs> I have a thesaurus. I don't care about words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mm -hmm. Read the problem. Read the problem. Immediately, you need to be able to determine which of these two formulas you're going to use. I've given you two formulas in this class for interest. We're talking about interest and investment right now. One is dealing with compounded continuously. One's dealing with compounded any other way. Can you tell me which is dealing with continuous compound, the left one or the right one? Right, right one. Good. You should have dealt with that on your homework. Right? Mm -hmm. This would be compounded any other way. So which one are we going to use, the right one or the left one? Left one. If I had said compounded continuously, you'd be using this one. Mm -hmm. If I say anything else, you're using that one. So we're going to eliminate this right now. Let's go ahead, let's try to identify all these letters. Firstly, A is the amount that you're going to have after your investment's over. P is your principal, R is your rate, N is your number of compounds, T is your number of years. How much is your, well, let's start here. How much is your P? What are you thousand, starting with? Thousand. So I know that this is going to equal 1,000. Okay, the 1 doesn't change. What's your rate here, ladies and gentlemen? 0.06. Okay, 6% good, 0 0.06 over somebody else on the right-hand side. How many compounds do we get out of this particular example? Four. Why? Where are you getting the four? four. Quarterly. Quarterly means four. Good. Four goes here. Four also goes here. These numbers are tied together. They're the same number. Wait, wait, hey, 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 hey. How about, how about T? How much T do we get? How much years is this? X. Do you know? Does it say? In fact... How long means find t. We're asking the time. We're asking how long is it going to take to double an investment. Folks, are you okay on plugging in these numbers right here and understanding that this is what we're actually looking for? Are you sure? Well, here's the problem, though. Can you think about, don't say it right away, I want everyone to think about this. Can you think about what number goes here? Just think for a second. If I'm asking you to double and investment. What was your investment? 
What's double that? Two thousand. So I'm asking you, how long is it going to take to get two thousand bucks? Double investment is twice that. So if I, if you invest a two thousand or a thousand dollars, you're looking when are you going to get two thousand? Isn't that something that might be useful? Say, how long do I have to keep this money in there to double my profit or to triple it or to increase it by fifty percent or so? That that's an, that's kind of a useful thing to know. So we are actually trying to solve for for t. Here's how we're going to do it. What it takes just a couple minutes. Just follow me through one time. I'll give you one little piece of advice on, on this to to look at it kind of a, a slightly different way. And then we will we'll be done. Firstly, you're going to work to try to get to that T. The first thing you've got to do, don't, don't distribute. You can't distribute that. That's got an exponent to it. The only thing you need to do is get rid of that 1,000. You do that by division. How much is 2,000 divided by 1,000, folks? So 2 equals 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 to the 4T power. Now, this is going to look weird, but I need you to identify that this right here is actually an exponential. Do you see it? That has a base of 2. This has a base of, why don't you figure that out for me? Do 0 0.06 divided by 4 and then add 1. Point zero 0.06 divided by 4 should be point zero 0.015. One five. So this is 1.015. Yes? To the 4t. Hey, look, look at the board. Look. That's an exponential. Do you have common bases? Do you have common bases? Are these the same number? No. Can you find common bases? No. So guess what we do? We take a log of both sides. It's the same type of problem. We're going to take a log of both sides over here. And what you're going to get is log of 2 equals log of 1.015 to the 4t. You okay with the logarithm? Yeah, it looks funny because you have a decimal, but it's the same idea. Hey, what can you do with the 4t? That's an exponent. So log of 2 equals log, I'm so sorry, 4t log of 1.015. Raise your hand if you can make it that far. Feel all right with that. That's not everybody. Are you guys okay with that? Are you sure? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Kind of, sort of. All right. It's the same idea. As soon as you get down to here, plug in numbers, divide by 1,000. That's one number. Raise your exponent. Take a log of both sides. Move your exponent forward. That's what we've been doing for a while now, today. Here's some fancy math. Divide by all the numbers you need to get rid of on both sides. So, for instance, you need to divide by a 4 to get rid of the 4. Agreed? Mm -hmm. You also need to divide by a log 1.015 to get rid of the 1. 0 log 1.015. Do that on both sides. You get t on the left. You get log of 2 over 4 log of 1.015. I'll do the math for you right now. If you do log of 2, that gives you approximately 0 0.3010. Zero. If you do log of 1.015, it's going to give you 0 0.006466. Now, unfortunately, you shouldn't really round those numbers. Because you're going to be way off on your number of years if you do. Because you're, you're dealing with really small numbers here. So in order to do this the right way, I'm going to do log of 2. And I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to divide by 4. And I'm going to press enter. That's this part right here. Whatever number you get, you divide again by log. Divide again. Remember, this is divide and divide. Divide again by log of 1.015. And what I got out of that is 11.64. 11.64 what? What were we looking for? Years. That's the years. It's going to take you over 11 and a half years to double an investment. Now, here is my important question for the day. 
if I raise my investment to a million dollars, will this happen sooner or later? If I raise it to a million dollars, if I raise it to a million dollars, that's a million dollars. If I double my investment, it would be two million dollars. <laughs> two million dollars. <laughs> what would happen? You divide by a million, right? Yeah. What's a million? What's two million divided by one million? Hey, it's, it's the same thing. To double any investment is going to be the same amount of time, provided your compounds and your interest rates are the same. The way you change the the amount of time it takes to double investment, interest rate. Most mostly it's interest rate. Compounds a little bit. Mostly interest rate. That would tell you the time it takes to double.